Okay. All right. So in this uh, session, uh, the goal is really to to give you like an introduction into what is a tutti and how does it work, and to make a demo on how uh, a tutti perform on a specific uh, business use case. Okay. So the first question I want you to uh, understand is what is a tutti? Um, and so the I think the the quote that best illustrate that is a quote actually from one of our user. Uh, Julien Logel, uh, who tweeted about us uh, like a few weeks ago, and I'm just going to read it out loud. Um, so he said, it's a great Python lib for exploratory data analysis, kind of your own small tableau right within a Jupyter Notebook. Very serious backend behind, efficient RAM management in memory queue. And I think that really summarized very well uh, what Atoti is. And basically, you have to keep in mind that Atoti is a combination of Tableau slash Power BI slash Plotly on the one hand. And on the other hand, Pandas or Spark, except that we natively support multi dimensional analysis and what if analysis. And we are going to talk a little bit more about those two last points during the demo. By the way, guys, if you have any comments or any questions, feel free to drop them on the chat and we'll do a small Q&A session at the end while I try to answer your questions, okay? So where can you find us? Well, actually, we have a website, a website at toady.io, where we have plenty of resources for you guys. So we provide tutorial, we provide articles and guides on how to work with a toady. Uh, we also have a notebook gallery that showcase multiple examples of how to use a toady against different uh, uh, use cases. Uh, it can be business use case, but it, we also have some fun notebooks uh, around fun topics uh, just for the sake of playing with a toady. So go check it out. And also we provide a, a nice documentation with an API reference. Uh, on the website as well. Uh, we also uh, we are also on different platforms. So we are on GitHub and Stack Overflow if you have any issues or any questions. Uh, we are on Gitter if you want to chat with us. Uh, you can directly chat with the, the, the team who develops um, Atodi. We are on Medium where we display articles as well. And you can follow us on LinkedIn and Twitter where we constantly post updates on a toady. So one thing that is important to understand before we move on into the, the technical part of how is a toady uh, built and how does it work is who is it for? Who's going to use it? And so this is presenting the different personas that are going to potentially interact with a toady. Uh, when you think about the data analyst and the data scientist, the one that you see on, on, at the center of the screen, they are constantly interacting with the data engineer or the IT on one hand and the business stakeholders on the other hand. Okay, And so Atoti is a Python library that is going to empower data analysts and data scientists to develop their own model directly in Python uh, completely in autonomy, meaning they will not need help from the IT. They will not need a specific training because, like I said, everything is available online. And they will be able to develop their own model. And as they do so, they will be able to share the results with their peers, with their partners, and in particular, with the business stakeholders. Um, and like I said, as they're developing the models, they don't need to then publish all the results and rebuild something inside a Tableau or Power BI. They can directly write off their notebook, publish their results with the business uh, stakeholders or the IT, and those people can directly play with the data without having to mess with the model, the Python model that those people have created. And so this gives you an overview for each of those personas. 
of the workflow. Um, so you, you have the IT, of course, who owns the data. Uh, and Atoti is going to directly pool those data with different connectors that we have. And I'm going to go over those in a minute. Um, and the data analyst and the data scientist are exploring uh, cleaning and modeling those data directly in Python from their laptop. Uh, it can be just using Atoti or it can be in combination with other libraries. And then, like I said, they publish uh, their results directly for the business to use in a dashboard web application. Um, so I hear some of you already asking, how does it work? So let me answer that question. <laughs> uh, so let's start on the bottom left of our, our screen. This is your laptop, OK? This is you installing the Python Atoti library on your laptop inside a, a Jupyter notebook, for example. And as you do that, in fact, we're going to spawn a Java server behind the scene. OK, it's completely transparent for you. And as you write instructions in Python, everything is going to be executed on the Java side. OK, so I repeat because it's very important. The instructions are written in Python, but everything is run inside Java, OK? So this Java server that you see here is going to pull the data, do all the schema, what we call the schema definition, so joining data sets together, for example. It is also going to create the uh, famous uh, multidimensional cubes and do the aggregation, uh, all the calculation, also in that server. Everything is running in memory. And so this is why you may want, depending on the data size that you have, you may want to run Atoti directly from your laptop, or you may want to deploy that directly in the cloud. OK, we, we have both options. Um, and then this server is going to give back the results either directly inside the notebook, and then we you would be able to display those results as a chart or as a table, again, directly inside the notebook, or it's going to publish the results uh, and make them available from a web application where people are going to be able to create dashboard. So what you see here on the bottom right is a bit like uh, what you picture when you think about Tableau or Power BI, OK? And in, here on the left side, it's more like we, we are inside the notebook where we give the Python instructions. And we may sometime visualize and explore the data a bit like you would do with Plotly, for example. Um, except that it's going to be codeless, meaning you don't have to code anything to actually uh, create your data visualization. And you'll see that in a moment when I'm going to do the demo. And one thing that I haven't talked about yet is on the left side, you see all the different data sources that we natively support. Uh, and so basically, if um, you were to have a data sources that's not listed over there, you would have to convert it to one of those uh, to then load it into a TOT, OK? And that's it. That was the very quick intro. And now we're going to see a demo. And I'm going to put this full screen up. OK, so here I am in a Jupyter notebook, for those who are familiar with this. And this particular notebook that I'm going to show you is available on our notebook gallery, OK? So whatever I'm going to run here, if you are curious about uh, running it again on your own, feel free to go on the check out our website, go into our gallery, and download the, the notebook as well so that you'll be able to run this by yourself directly, OK? So in this notebook, we're going to consider uh, a retail uh, use case, OK, which is called pricing optimization. So basically, what we start with is a data set composed of checkout receipts. OK, those checkout receipts, what they tell us is they tell us which products have been bought together. OK, and from that information, what we're trying to the first thing we're trying to do is we're trying to do a classification. What we're trying to guess is we're trying to see which products are driver products, which products are complementary product, and which products are 
independent products, okay? We're trying to classify them in one of those three categories. So what, what are each of those categories? So let me start with what is a driver product? So let's take as an example uh, that you want to buy a drill, okay? When you want to buy a drill, it's kind of an expensive item to buy. So you'll tend to compare which store has the cheapest drill. And you'll go to the store with the cheapest drill. So that's what we call a driver product. It's the reason why the customer is going into your, your store, actually, okay? Uh, next, we have the complementary product. So a complementary product is once you go to the store to buy a drill, you might want to buy some accessories with that drill. Uh, maybe you want to buy a battery. Maybe you want to buy a drill bit, okay? But it doesn't have to be drill accessories. It can be anything that goes along with a drill. For example, you might decide to buy gloves to go with the drill, okay? So you didn't go into the store to buy gloves, but you, as you're buying the drill, it happens that you need and you want to buy gloves as well. That's called complementary products. And then you have independent products, which tends to be large item like tables, chairs, which usually are very expensive and you just buy them on their own. They are so large anyway that you wouldn't have any space to buy something else. And so these are the three categories of products that we want to uh, extract from the checkout receipt uh, data set. And so how did we do that? I'm not gonna spend too much time on it, but if you want to have a look at some details, you can check out our online publicly available article about that same notebook where we detail a bit the steps, the different steps that we took to actually come up with those uh, different data sets, okay? Uh, so let me just go back to the notebook. Okay, so let's consider that we have run this classification algorithm. So now what we have in our hand is a set of products and for each product, we have a, a class, right? We, we were able to classify each of those products among one of those three categories. And what we'll see in this notebook is how can we leverage those different classification to optimize our pricing strategy from a retailer perspective, okay? So the first cell right here, uh, we're going to import Atleti and create a session, okay? So when I create a session, uh, this is actually where we're going to spawn the Java server, okay? Once, the sh once that session is ready, I'm going to load the different data that I have, okay? So the first data set, we are reading it as a CSV file, and it is stored right now on a AWS S3 bucket. And so we directly read that data set from the S3 bucket, okay? Uh, and that data set is, in fact, given me for each product, the product name and the brand. The second data set that we're loading, also from a AWS S3 bucket, is actually that uh, very uh, data set that we just talked about, which is classifying each product among one of those three classes. By the way, you can see here the product name and brands uh, are random and not like generic names. This is because we had to anonymize the data uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, we couldn't use the, the real names of each uh, product. Um, once we have those two data sets, we're going to join them together and create the queue. And this is what the data uh, schema look like, okay? This has been gener generated directly with Atoti on the fly, and it tells us that we started from this classified product data set, and we enriched it with the product name and the brand. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to load all the data into the session. This is because out of the box, Atoti is going to sample your data. This is to prevent, uh, in case you have a lot of data, let's say uh, hundreds of gigabytes of data, uh, where as you're exploring the data, we're only taking a, a sample of the data so that you can quickly explore. And once you're 
ready. Once you know exactly what you want to build, then you can call uh, this method to actually load all the data. And so once we have that, uh, now actually we already have a web application that's ready to run. So if I write session.url, it gives me a URL. And if I click on it, this is where I have access to this web application dashboard uh, like, which is similar to what some of you may know as Power BI or Tableau, where I can actually start creating dashboards. And so here, for example, I would be able to create a pivot table or a chart. And on a pivot table, uh, right now, we don't have much measures to look at. But for example, we could see how many uh, lines, how many lines did we load? So we loaded 60,000 lines. And we can see how do they distribute among the different classes that we have uh, created, OK? Um, the next thing is, once I have uh, the cube created, I'm also able to start visualizing uh, the different uh, data directly inside my notebook. So if I write cube.visualize, I'm offered to pick one of those three widgets. And so, for example, here, I could decide to create a, a chart this time. Um, and so I have access to the same wizard that you saw inside the dashboard. And I can select the count as well. Uh, let's say I want to create uh, columns. And I want to split it by class again. Uh, and so here you can see we're displaying the same information than before, except we're displaying it as a columns chart, OK? And here, as you can see, I've, I was able to create that widget directly from the notebook without writing a single line of code, OK? And that's one of the feature of uh, cube.visualize. Once we create uh, such a visualization, uh, the notebook remembers that visualization. And so that's why from now on, when I'm going to run cube.visualize, you are not going to see me create such visualization, but it's already going to be uh, correctly uh, designed. It's because we've already created those visualization, and the notebook remembers the structure of it and just to re-execute the query. So here, for example, we are able to display um, a pie chart uh, detailing the for each category how many products we have. OK. And the next thing we want to do now that we have this ability to uh, have the data and visualize them. So by the way, before I jump into the next part, uh, realize that now, as soon as we've created the cube, people have access to this dashboard where they can already explore the data and create dashboards, filters, views on their own uh, without, much do, without us doing much, actually. We've just you know, uh, joined a few data set and created a cube. So now what we're going to do is we're going to enrich that cube. We're going to uh, add more data and add more measures. So the next thing we want to do is to compute the margin, the, the total margin that we have for our store. And so what we're going to do is we're going to load the purchase as well as the selling prices for each product, OK? So I'm going to load those two data sets, and I'm going to add them to the existing queue. And so this is now how the uh, schema look like. And so you can see now we are not only enriching the product with the brand name and the product name, we're also adding the purchase price and the selling price. And you'll notice that I haven't restarted anything. Yet, if I go to this dashboard, you can see that I have now access to the purchase price and the selling price. Okay, And that's also another feature, meaning as I'm enriching my cube, as I'm joining new data, and as we're going to see, as I'm adding new measures, I don't have to restart anything. Everything is ready to use directly inside the widget or inside the web application. So the next thing we're going to do is actually compute that margin. The formula of the margin is not that complex. It's the selling price minus the purchase price multiplied by the quantity. And we are going to sum that across each of our products. This is exactly what's defined here. Here we are doing the sum 
across all my products of selling price minus purchase price multiplied by the quantity, okay? So I'm going to run that. And then right away, like I said, the measure becomes available. So if I go back to my um, previous pivot table, I also have access to the margin and I can uh, you know, send it to my view. And that's the beauty of the multidimensional. I just define it once and then whatever I put on rows, whatever I put on columns, the margin is going to always recompute correctly, okay? And so this is a, a column chart giving you that margin per class, okay? Then we're going to define another measure, which is the average selling price, the mean selling price, okay? Because we're going to need it uh, for the next views that uh, we are looking at. And one thing that I didn't show you yet is that on each of the widgets that you have here, you have an option to publish those widgets inside the web application. So we've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it here, but just to show you what it looks like is if I click now on this pre-defined dashboard, you'll see that this view is actually retrieving the few of the widgets that we've defined before, as well as some others. And in fact, each of the widgets that you defined in um, your notebook are available as building blocks to compose dashboards, you can edit them, you can add new ones, you're really free to, to change it. But at least the, the, the data analyst or the data scientist can very quickly push some predefined views to the end user. Um, so I'm gonna jump a few sections because time is running uh, and I'm gonna jump right away into this price index formula. So this is a formula that some retailer use uh, to actually uh, define whether they are more or less expensive than the, their competitors. Um, and basically it, it calculates the uh, ponderated uh, margin uh, against the actual margin, okay? Ponderated by the average competitor price. So what we're going to do here is we're going to load that competitor price data and add it to the current tube. So same thing as before, I don't have to restart anything and I've enriched uh, the cube with a one to many join where for each product, I'm joining several uh, rows where uh, for each product we have uh, the competitor name and the price uh, of that product uh, for that specific competitor. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define uh, that price index formula. So this is really the, the, the few cells that you see here are in fact defining uh, the formulas that you see above. The thing that is a little bit more complex is that in fact the data uh, are not clean in a sense that sometimes we don't have the competitor price for a given product and sometimes we even don't have selling prices, okay? And I, I'm sure you guys can all relate to that. Data are not always clean. Uh, and so here we just have to, to make a little condition to make sure that when we create the denominator, we don't divide by zero. Uh, and so we make sure that we pick up the, the right value. Once we have defined that price index, again, that's the beauty of this uh, the multidimensional, is that I can look at my price index overall. So this, for example, is telling me that overall I'm cheaper than my competition, okay? And this is breaking it down per classes and this is breaking it down per competitor. And so you can see which competitor are more expensive or less expensive than you. And if uh, you divide by uh, the different classes that we created above, you can see that here we are a little bit more expensive on the driver product and a little bit uh, cheaper on the independent and complementary products, okay? So from now on, what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, uh, and simulate a new pricing strategy. The question we're going to ask ourselves is what would happen if I were to change the selling prices of a few products? And what I want to know is before I actually commit to change those prices, I want to know how is it going to impact my margin? How is it going to impact, for example, my price index, okay? And so here I'm going to jump to the second simulation where we do actually just that. So what we're going to do is we are going to 
Uh, so let me just run those few cells just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, so we are going to load a new selling price data set that we have obtained thanks to a pricer, a pricer function. So just imagine you have that pricer function that is going to give you for each product the new selling price that you want to apply. Okay. Once we have that, we are going to load that new data set inside Atoti and we're going to name that scenario Optimize Price Index. So I'm just going to do that. And once we do that in Atoti, it's going to create a new hierarchy called scenario where, in fact, every time you run a calculation, any calculation that you can imagine, the one that you've seen before or any others, you can decide to run that calculation for the base scenario, which is your original data set, or you can decide to run that for the optimized price index scenario, which is the modified data set. Not only this, but you are able to compare them side by side. Okay, so here, for example, we can see that under this new optimized price index scenario, our complementary product are more expensive, while our driver and independent product are now cheaper. And this is how much margin we're going to save on the complementary product. And this is how much margin we're going to lose on the other product. Overall, we're gaining a 2 million uh, margin. And this is also giving me uh, how it impacts my price index, OK? So doing so, I'm really able to drive ahead my decision. And if I want to apply that pricing strategy, I do have a metric that actually is going to tell me how much is it going to impact my, uh, my margin, OK? Uh, one thing to realize is if you wanted to do that without a TOTI, uh, it would prove kind of difficult. Because as you're loading these extra selling prices into your uh, data sources, you would have to redefine every single measures that derive from that selling prices, right? So you would have the margin uh, for the base selling price and the margin for the optimized selling price. You would have the price index for the base selling price and the margin for the optimized selling price. And imagine now you have 10 scenarios that becomes a nightmare to maintain and a nightmare to write, right? And people tend to only change data in place, rerun the notebook multiple times, and then compare the output on, a, on another tool, right? Uh, so this is much more integrated. And so um, that concludes uh, the brief introduction that I wanted to show you of uh, Atoti, um, where we can see uh, we, we have seen different uh, features together. And I think now we can go back to the main session if you guys have any questions or comments.